Hello, good morning, welcome aboard Sea Urchin. It's been a while since I've had a chance to come out and do a little bit of fishing and film it, but today's the day. I've had it written in my diary for a few weeks now. One of the things that happens I've noticed with my booking calendar is the small tides get booked up fairly quickly because people like wrecking and quite often the spring tides, the bigger tides, we're talking 5.234 they're always the last to go in my diary the reason for that I think is well a few reasons perhaps a lot of people do like wreck fishing and that's what they like to do which is completely fine but some people wrongly think I had somebody recently on who said that you only only the big fish live on wrecks you don't catch big fish on rough ground which is complete nonsense and also on a big tide fishing conditions are more difficult the boat drifts more quickly there's a lot more tide so today the aim of today is to show you what a typical day is on a spring tide how we approach it and how you get the best from it I'm not going to be out too long maybe four or five hours I'm running out of Whitby now and we've got slack water in about two hours slack water being the point in between low and high tide which is when the tide stops moving so on a day like today slack tide is when we would take the opportunity to fish a wreck or two so that's where I'm destined first. I'm not going to go too far. The inshore waters are starting to clear out. So I'm only going to run three or four miles and have a go on a couple of wrecks through slack water. Apologies for the bounciness, I'm just going out of the pier ends. There's always a little bit of motion in the ocean. Yeah, so we'll fish a couple of wrecks through slack. We've done wreck fishing before. You never know, we might get one or two. And then from there we'll push out and go and have a go drifting on some rough ground. We've got lots of rough ground around Whitby, which is great for the big tides. And the, the basic principle is, the closer inshore you are, the more tide there is. So if I fished the rough ground at three miles, I might be drifting We'll say, for example, I might be drifting at 1.5 knots. If I went out to the nine mile ground, I might be drifting at 1.2 knots, or maybe even less. So that's how we approach it. On the really big tides, we'll fish the best conditions to give the anglers the best drift that they can. We've covered tidal range at Whitby before. But just to, to quickly recap, the tidal range at Whitby runs from sort of four metres to six metres, with four metres being the small neap tides and six metres being the very big spring tides. Today we're in spring tides. Actually today is the biggest of the springs. It's only a 5.4, not enormous, but it will make the fishing conditions more challenging. These big tides, we drift a lot more quickly. And I see, I do see anglers struggle. I think the reason for it is perhaps experience in a lot of cases, because the anglers who've been around the block a few times and are regular anglers will quite often avoid the big tides they can book, you know, they have the luxury of booking in advance, so that's what they do. They'll book their favourite tides in advance, which leaves, more often than not, the real big tides. And usually the people that book those are ones who don't understand tides. They just see it as, well, it's the, the weather's nice, we'll go and have a day's fishing. That is absolutely fine. I take a great amount of pleasure in getting novice anglers fishing 
and fishing well and catching fish. And if they come for a day on sea urchin and I can get them catching fish in a big spring tide, I class that as a, a real result. Because if they learn how to control the fishing tackle when we're drifting quickly, then if they come on another trip on a smaller tide, they will find it an absolute doddle when the lines are running up and down, not running off the boat. So, yeah, I'm going to show you the methods that we use to combat the big tides. We're just rounding the bell buoy now. So we're just going to run south a few miles and have a drop on a wreck inside. The water's not completely clear yet. It's still, still coming, coming clear. But we have had fish off some of the inshore wrecks now. They're not all, they're not all holding fish, or certainly when we visited them, they're not all holding feeding fish. But the one that I'm going to go to this morning, I fished a few days ago, and we did okay on it. So I'm hoping that there's still a few fish knocking around. We're not going to be there for long, it's not a wrecking session particularly, but because I've come out on slack water, and as I said, I want to show you how a, a typical day on a spring tide runs, that fishing wrecks is part of it. But the majority of the day, probably three quarters of the day, will be made up of drifting rough ground. Right, I've got about 20 minutes to go. I'll see you when I get down there. Well, we're here now. Just a short run down from Whitby. Um, yeah, so I was explaining on the way down. We're now above, well, we're not above the wreck. I've just been checking the drift to see how we're looking. We're still running a little bit hot. Drift speed was showing as 1.5, which is little bit too quick for the wrecks. Wind's holding us a touch. I'll have a, I'll have a drop down anyway and see how we're looking. As you can hear the engines are running it's going to be like that all day because I'm going to be running backwards and forwards over the wreck or I'm going to be running backwards and forwards drifting over the rough ground. Right I don't think there's much more to talk about really. Bait today is just going to be either squid or shads depending on what I'm doing. The mackerel are just about starting to turn up, the odd scouts around, but I'm not wasting my time looking for mackerel. I'll wait until they're here in numbers, so I always do fine on squid. With mackerel you catch loads of ling, and to be honest, because I'm not taking fish for the table, I'd rather not catch ling if I'm honest, because they don't go back very well. They, uh, they get the, the fishy equivalent of the bends and the swim bladder comes out and they don't go back very well. So. I'll fish with just squid in an attempt to avoid getting ling. I'd like to catch plenty of cod ling, don't, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I'm not too fussed about catching ling. Right, I'll run back up to the top and we'll start the first drift. Right, okay then. We're in position. Let's have the first drop. Nothing's different from the previous times that I've shown you. I'm controlling the descent, I can feel the braid running under my thumb. I'm not sure, I think this tide might still be a, a little bit hot. I'm just looking at my line and it's streaming away already. Might be a little bit uh, premature for... We'll see, I'll have a go. If I get stuck straight away, I'll, I'll just have a pause. Right, okay, I'm on the bottom. So, I'll lift my gate, lower it down dunk and feel it on the bottom and I'm feeling for bites now if I feel the wreck at all oh, there's a fish yeah I was gonna say if, if I feel the wreck at all then I will lift up
and then you, you lift the rig and replace it. That's the biggest problem is people are too, I find too tentative, they have a gentle little lift to sit and then by then it's normally too late, you, you kind of, you're stuck in. It's not a, not a big fish at all, however, and I kid you not, 100% this is first drop. I did one drift over it just to check the drift line so that I didn't set it up and then we missed it. But yeah, this is first drift, so maybe there are one or two at home. Here it comes, the coddling. Not a bad fish to start, lovely clean one. He wanted that. That's kind of the beauty of when you're wrecking is that the action is because the fish take it straight away, they're not very often the deep hooked. So this one's absolutely fine. He was lip hooked and we'll slip him straight back. I'm gonna have a quick look on my screen. I'm not sure whether I'll get another drop, but I might have to go back up to the stock, but what a nice little start. Back you go, mate. Now I can see on my screen, we've just come off the end of it. So I'll run back up to the top. Right, let's go. Drift number two. I think if I get, if I manage to get another fish this drift, I think I'll have a go on a shad while there's still some tide. I love shad fishing. I'm not going to talk too much in depth about shad fishing really today because I don't think I'm going to do too much of it and I'm hoping that the next time I get out to sea to do a little bit more of a video that I'll, I'm going to do one purely on shadding. That's all I plan to do for the day. Okay, we're down on the bottom. On the wreck now. I've not had any little um, rattles or taps from pouting, which would suggest that the tide is still pushing nicely. Oh, he says, that's a, that was a real powerful bite, that one. A real powerful bite, might have been a, might have been a ling or something, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's maybe a small ling or something, but. As you can see, nothing's changed in the way that we play the fish, just nice and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Kind of took me by surprise that bite, because normally you get some kind of an indication. You'll get a, a, a little tremble or a, a tap or something. I just got one thump then. So whatever it was, definitely wanted it for its breakfast. sort of given up a little bit now which again would suggest a little I'm, I'm hoping it's a cod but I have a 
sneaking suspicion it won't be. Now, as, as anticipated, little strap link. Yeah, these, these fellas really do feed aggressively. These are only small. It's just a nuisance really because so they don't go back too well. Oh. Well, he's gone. Didn't get a chance to show you, but right. Let's see if we can make it three out of three on bait. It's drift number four. That's it, we're down. Oh, well, there's a fish on that already. Yeah, there is. I'm wondering if I foul hooked something. Because it literally just got to the bottom there was a fish on. It must like that squid, it must be. One of the anglers from yesterday said, oh, I've got a box of squid left. Would you like me to leave it? Because I'm not going to stick it in my freezer at home. And I thought, oh, why not? So it's been donated to a very worthy cause. I'm hope, uh, yeah. As the, the tide's definitely starting to ease when you catch these little herbits. This pouting literally took it on the drop. He's got it fed, it's not foul hooked. But we don't want them. Yeah, a, a definite sign that the, the tide is beginning to ease because the winds stayed the same. But all of a sudden my drift line has just, the wind's taking a little bit more control than the tide. And as soon as it's done that, I've got to the bottom and pouting have started feeding. So yeah, we're definitely on the run into slack. I'll take us back up and I'm going to have to start setting a new drift line. Right. I've just waited a little bit longer this time. I've just waited till we're actually right on the wreck because the lines are streaming off fairly quickly. So I would rather have sort of drop straight into the target area as opposed to trying to drift onto it with my line running away. It's harder to control when your line runs away from the boat because when you're not fishing vertically, you're dragging it along the bottom and it tends to get caught up a lot more. One of the occupational hazards of dropping straight into the wreck though <laughs> is that you might get stuck. No, we've got him. So that, that paid dividends, it's nodding a bit this one, it might be a cod. Sometimes, for, oh, it's dropped off. I'll go back in. I don't know whether I've got any bait left on. I'll assume that I have, and that my trace isn't tangled up. Felt like a half decent fish as well. That never mind.
in answer to my question, <laughs> yes, there was some paint left on. I suppose if nothing else, if the ground fish is hard when we go and try it, at least I've had an hour's fun getting a few fish and that's what it's all about. Here it is. Oh, not another one of them little. Suppose it's the right time of tide for getting these little strapling, but they aren't half annoying. He's very, very lightly hooked. Okay. Getting back. He's gone. Right, chocks away. I'm just dropping myself straight on the wreck here. Not drifting onto it today. I'm in a bit of a situation really because I'd, I'd love to just stay fishing the wreck until the tide gets too much but I'm, I'm here to to demonstrate rough ground fishing so I think despite what I want to do I should really do the right thing and get to the gr three mile ground and fish that before the tide gets too much. coming to the, the snaggier side of the wreck now. I've not had a bite yet. Something had a go then. Ooh. Something's just having a go now, but I can also feel wreck at the same time. That was a more positive bite as well. Might have been a, a ling or something. Oh, no. It's gone in that real snaggy bit again. You can feel it continually great and it's horrible. I was expecting it to absolutely, <laughs> absolutely go solid any second. So, right, that's it. I'm happy enough, I've had a few bites, whatever happens today. So, I'll make this the last one. So as you can see, yes, today is a big spring tide, but I've had, I don't know, I think eight drifts or nine drifts, and it's 
it's harder to fish it, the lines aren't straight up and down, but so long as you control your gear, make sure it's on the bottom by paying off a little bit of line, but not loads, you really do just have to concentrate and keep control. You can still get bites just the same as you can when your lines are fishing vertically and there's no wind at all. I don't know what we've got this time. Now oh, we've got a little codlin to, to finish off with. If you don't drop off. There we go. I wouldn't say a little codlin, he's... Well, it's not massive, but... Nice fish. Just put my lead in the pot. Don't want to let the leads bang the boat because the skipper will shout at me. There we go. So, he's had a tough life this one. He's, he's, uh, if you look on there, you can see that there's some blemishes. Where a ling or something has had hold of him, it looks like the mouth of a ling. So, he's managed to escape it. Tough life on the wreck. We'll pop him back, let him survive. Go on, mate. There he goes. Gone flying off. Right, so, that's that. We're done with wrecking now. We're going to run out to the three mile ground. I'll see you out there and I'll show you how we fish on the rough ground. Well, that was good fun for an hour. Caught a few fish, had a few bites, very nice, I enjoyed that. It's been a while since I've had a chance to have a drop on a wreck, so yeah. I've cut that short, there's still, the tide isn't, it's not slack water, well it is now, it literally is slack water now, but there'll still be a period of time when the tide turns, so it was flooding, running to Scarborough, now it's going to start ebbing and running up towards Hartlepool but it will take a period of time before it gets up to full speed so I'm going to use that period of time instead of running out to the seven, eight, nine mile area that we would ordinarily fish on this size tide I'm just going to run to the three mile ground while the tide is still fishable and have an hour's fishing out there on the drift on the rough ground just to, sh and to describe and show you the techniques that we use because it's not difficult it just takes concentration. That's all it is, is concentration and controlling the tackle. You've got to remember that the fish, they're still down there. They're still down there and the boat is drifting quicker than it ordinarily would. So if people are just dragging the gear along the bottom, they're whizzing past the fish. So the actual name of the game is to try and keep your gear still for long enough that the fish get a chance to find it and give you bites. That's how we do it. Now on a charter boat, on a big tide, so I will take usually nine, no more than nine, because the line's streaming, you do get more tangles. The only reason we get so many tangles is because people can't control the tackle. Now, Depending on where you fish on the boat, whether you're on port side, starboard side, or fishing off the back, your line will run. So if you're on starboard, your line will either run away from the boat or under it, depending on which way it's, the boat is facing. So you'll either fish away from the boat or under it. A lot of people really struggle to get to grips with fishing under the boat. So that's what I'm going to show you. And that's why I've switched and not fishing on the back today, I'm fishing on the side so that I can show you how I approach it, how I approach the fishing, whether I'm fishing off or under, because you do things slightly differently. Okay, so we're out on the three mile ground. I haven't um, set a drift or anything off yet. I just wanted to show you what we use. I just I described it on the way out in the wheelhouse what they are, but just so that you can see. They're just these. 
So you get three of these on a trace that's not quite a metre long and that just clips onto the top of your braid that comes from the reel and then your lead goes on the bottom. So when you fish them, they fish vertically like that and you lift them up and down. They come in various colours, various sizes, some are quite small. I prefer the ones that have got like um, six o hooks on and tied on at least 60 pound line because as I've said when the big fish are on the ground you hook one of them you want to give yourself the best chance of landing it. Colours wise I don't know whether it makes any difference or not I actually personally black are my favourites um, I've always done quite well with blacks and it's a confidence thing so I will start off with some black ones today and then I may change over and try these orange ones or something but just want to go through the principles. I'm just going to run the boat, set a pr uh, proper drift to cover some nice areas and then we'll go through how we're fishing because at the moment I'm looking at it I'm going to start off by fishing, I'll be fishing the line running under the boat so we'll see how that goes. Right so I've set my drift up, the other thing, that, the only thing I need to do now is just put a little bit of squid on these so I'll just I'll take a normally take a one of the unwashed squid and cut them into three just small bits you don't want to overload the hooks top tip um, when you're using these more often than not it'll be the one that's at the bottom that seems to get taken first that's probably because it's nearer to the seabed so the, the, the juiciest and best bit of a squid is its head so I always always put the head on the bottom one right so three bits of bait as I said I'm going to be fishing with my line under the boat How do you know which, whether your line's going to be under the boat or over the boat? Uh, running away, sorry, from the boat. The, the way to tell is the wind. When the wind is in your face, you will be, your lines will be running away from the boat. Because the wind always turns the boat beam on. Um, I prefer personally to fish with my lines under the boat. The reason that I prefer to fish under, if I can, is that you actually cover the fish first. You're the first that marks the bits of ground that you're drifting. When your lines are running away, you're following behind the others. But it is easier to fish with your lines running away. Hence me wanting to show this technique. So I'm just, no different to how I would normally drop down. Dunk, it's down on the bottom. And then initially it'll be really easy. There'll be no resistance. So all we do, is we're fishing out of gear obviously and we've got to keep the bait on the bottom so oh I've got a fish straight away look at that <laughs> I'll be honest I didn't expect that I thought I'm just going to be able to show the technique and go back in so well it works the old black hawkeye strike first drop. I can't believe that, genuine. <clears throat> Not an enormous fish, but I don't know who's more surprised to get the bite, me or the fish. I don't think it's going to be one of the little haddock that are flying around because if it was you can see I don't know whether it'll show it on the clip how far back my line's running it's literally the fish will appear from underneath the boat there we go this might drop off there we go How's about that? First 
and just like I said on the other one, first drop, and it literally was. I ain't making it up. That was my first drop. I am. I'm hoping you can tell that I'm quite surprised. It's, uh, there we go. Lovely, clean. Lovely, clean fish. Really nice, white, creamy belly. He's grand, isn't he? Right. Well, we'll have another go. I hope there's going to be some more of them. Right, because we're... I'm just going to have a quick look on the... Um, plotter whereabouts I am on the drift. But one thing you've got to remember is that the areas of ground that we're drifting in, they are fairly, you know, they're fairly big. So, unlike wreck fishing, where it's like you might be down and up five minutes max, you're winding up, dropping up and down, up and down. When you're on the rough ground, you drift sometimes, I mean, on this particular stretch here, one drift can be 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and you're just covering lots of area, nice areas. Right, we'll try, try another drop. I didn't really get a chance to explain much that time. So, yeah, line's running under the boat. What you've got to remember, this isn't a, this is a charter boat. Granted, I am on my own today, but normally there could be eight other anglers with you on these big tides. So there will be anglers fishing on that side of the boat. What you don't want to do is pay off loads and loads and loads of line, stay down for it, you will just literally get tangle after tangle. So when I'm fishing under the boat, right, I'm down to the bottom now, I normally start counting and I'll do it. So I lift the gear, I'll lower it down, and if I need to, there, I've had to pay out line straight away to keep the lead on the bottom. But I'm keeping it on the bottom and I'm keeping it still. I'll lift it again. Yeah, so I'm paying about half a metre of braid out every time I lift. But that's allowing me to keep my tackle still on the bottom. And when I've done maybe 10 lifts, then instead of going right the way through all the other lines, I will, res I will wind up and start again. And the reason that I do that is, I explained it with the wrecking, really you want your line to be as vertical as you can get it. The more it runs away, the less action that you're putting into your bait. Yeah, I mean, there. that's probably three quarters of a metre. I probably won't even get to 10 today before I start thinking about winding up. Oh, there's something having a, having a little bite now. So when I get a bite, instead of lifting it, I'll just pay off some line to leave it in, in, in position. So that then that hopefully the fish will come and take it. I'm not sure whether that's on or not. No, it's not. But I'm a long way back now, so I'm going to do exactly what I said. I'm going to wind up and redrop the tackle. We'll have another drop with that one. If I had a 12 ounce lead on today, um, I don't think I'd even be able to keep it, certainly fishing here anyway, this close in, I don't think I'd even be able to keep it on the bottom. It, and if you can't keep your gear on the bottom, you can't catch the fish. We're not shad fishing, we're bait fishing. You'll see I have to keep lowering my rod and I do that because I'm trying to keep the same amount of tension on the line. I don't want it loose, I don't want to drag it, I want to keep everything still. So as the boat drifts, I have to move the rod. I mean, this is, this is hard fishing under the boat today, especially because I'm 
trying to do it so that I can keep the rod in shot but it looks like I got lucky first drop Now with, with having 16 ounces of lead on and paying out this much line on the drift I know that it's pointless me putting the shad down with a 10 ounce lead because it'll just, it won't fish. The only way to do it with a shad would be, oh, there's one. Cool. Banging its head a bit. Well, this is better than better than I anticipated. I think I don't know whether this is fighting so much because it's in the tide or or whether it is something a little bit better. God, it's making my arm ache. There is definitely the tide element where that puts additional pressure on, but I don't know, I don't think this is a tiny fish. And the, this, this reminds me of last year's festivals. I had um, Keith, when Keith McCance was, uh, he, had, he up to fish and he said he was stuck on the bottom. He was fishing under the boat, just like stood here actually, in this exact position. And he said he was stuck on the bottom and he, he bent into it and then he, as eventually I saw the rod nod and I was like, nah, that's a fish. And we never saw it because he was bringing it under the boat. We didn't see it at all until it just materialised at the side of the boat. As it turned out, I think it was a, I don't know, 14 and a half pound ling or something like that. Yeah, it was great. This is not a tiny fish. Right, my line's getting a little bit more vertical now, so must be getting close. Ah, speak of ling, it's not 14 and a half pound, but uh, it's uh, and right, okay, I don't know whether I can work my way down here with the rod as well, but I just want to show you. why I keep rabbiting on about slow and steady. That is literally hooked on its outer lip. That fish, on its outer lip. So if you, if you really pull and rav and everything at them, then, uh, I don't know, what will it be? It's only three or four pounds. That is a, that is a legal size ling, but I don't know whether to keep it for for someone or not. Um, I'm not allowed to take ling home, my mum doesn't like it, she said it tastes of fish. Okay, so now I'm fishing with my line running away from the boat. So we drop down just like not, nothing, you don't do anything any differently apart from I pay out more line on this side, so I get away from the people who are fishing under the boat. If that makes sense. So people who are fishing under the boat, their lines could be 20 metres back that way. So I want to be further away from them, just to minimise the amount of times that I get stuck with them. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Well, there's fish on the ground anyway, that's nice to see. Yeah. 
it's actually exceeded my expectations. I thought, well, with it being so, but we don't normally fish on this ground on such a big tide because of the drift speed. But it just goes to show the fish are there if you can present your bait properly. I mean, if I'd been on a regular day today, I would, I would still have done what I've done, as in come out because the timings were right, I would have jumped on the wreck at slack water, but the chances are I would, wouldn't have come here. As soon as the tide had got going, I would have been out to the, at least five mile, if not seven, and probably ultimately spending most of the day on the nine mile ground. As the further, further away we get from land, the more tide we lose. I don't know what this is. Is it a codlin? Yeah. Yeah. He's taken the top one. Is this? He's probably on the verge of what I should really be lifting with. There we go. Put the lead in the holder. There we go, nice cuddling. There we go, just goes to show all these people that, you know, the people that avoid booking on big tides. Do you know what? I've really enjoyed this morning. I have genuinely really enjoyed it. I'm gonna have, an, I'm gonna have another couple of drops before we finish filming, but you know what? That's a nice cod. Get a couple of nice fillets off that. If I was that way inclined, I'm not taking them today. Back you go. Bush. Gone. Yeah, I just checked my drift speed then when I went back in the wheelhouse and we're now doing 1.9 knots, so nearly 2 knots, but we're on the 3 mile ground. This is, to be honest, it's faster than I would normally like to put my customers through. I would have moved out by now. But if you ever hit the, hit the speed of two knots or over when you're out on the nine mile ground, then you know you've got a really, really big tide. It's normally a little bit easier when you get out that far. I'm get, you know, if I was to go out there now, I think if I was doing maybe 1.9 in here today, I'd probably be doing about 1.3 or 4. Look at that, it's gone again straight away. I'd be doing, uh, yeah, maybe 1.3 or 1.4 knots. which is very fishable and I'm not being funny but if you can't enjoy what I've just had this morning then you're not an angler really not every fish has to be enormous to be good fun I'm just happy getting bites I don't care what they're from I said this was going to be the last drop I'm going to have one more one more cast And I got the uh, seven o'clock bridge this morning. I came out of the harbour at seven o'clock and it's, I've just checked now and it's quarter past 10. So three hours fishing and I've had all these bites. Another one on the top hook. You get away, Mr. Gully. This is more of the, the, the stamp of fish that we've been getting on the ground, to be honest. So, no harm done. We're popping back. Well, it's official. I am totally rubbish. It reminds me of when I was a wee lad and we used to go and fish on the River Derwent at Furby. And I used to have 537 last casts. I was just putting the stuff down there and I thought, no, I'm going to have one more go. Can't help myself. Oh, 
But this is definitely my last cast. Honestly, it is. something like that. Hey! <laughs> that was quite a long way from the boat. But there you go. We got one. I'm going to finish on a high, finish on a fish for a change. I haven't said it today but I should and that is all these things that I talk about are all based on fishing on a charter boat in Whitby. Not anywhere else, I'm no expert, but I do know round here what catches fish. <laughs> so that's what I want to share with you. So that if you do come and it helps you get a few fish, doesn't matter which boat you go on, these, you know, these things work and I see them working day in, day out. Probably the smallest one I think we've had today, but yeah. If you've taken the time to watch this, thanks very much. I enjoy making them. Um, yeah, onwards and upwards. <laughs>